Hey guys, what's up? It's Ted from Studio 7 Designs, and today I have for you an After Effects rendering tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to render better in After Effects and much faster. So, to get started, first of all, we're going to need a composition, just like this one over here. Now, you may have a video, in my case, I have a photo. So, all you have to do is go to Composition and Add to Render Queue. Once you have done so, you should see something in here. And you should see the composition name over here, along with several uh, settings. So let's begin. Let's go through our render settings over here. In here you'll see some very basic uh, adjustments that we can make to our render. Uh, most of these are not really uh, pertinent to uh, most renders, but whenever you go into here you want to make sure you have your quality to best, resolution to full, and it's really about it. And make sure your frame rate matches the videos all in your composition. So let's continue and move on to the output module. In here, you'll see we can change the format, uh, video output, and several other aspects. So let's get started with the format. In the format, we could change the, you know, basically the format of whatever we're going to render out. So in my case, I'm from what is it? A rendering out a uh, photo. So I want to go to either PNG sequence over here, or I want to go to JPEG sequence. Now I prefer to use PNG sequence only because I do like the results a little better. However, if you were to render out a video, I prefer to use QuickTime over here. And when you go into QuickTime, you would go to Format Options and adjust the quality. Now, I generally keep my quality somewhere between 80 and 100. Um, the only reason you would lower it is to provide a smaller file. And you can change your video codec. I prefer to use animation for all my intro videos and some films only because it renders out a smaller uh, file which is more optimized for uh, web, play, web playback. Um, or you can go with the photo JPEG uh, video codec, which is also pretty good. Uh, what's also interesting is you can adjust these uh, photo JPEG options when you choose this format by hitting the codec settings. And you can optimize it for streaming. Let's go hit OK. And I believe you could do the same with, oh no, you can't do that with animation, but still, that's pretty good. For now, we'll stick to animation only because you get a smaller file. Let's hit OK. And I did not say it before, but uh, the only reason I choose QuickTime over AVI and FLV and all these other formats is one, it's compatible with YouTube and you, know, you can upload it easily. And two, it doesn't provide a huge file unlike AVIs and other ones. So I usually stick with QuickTime. Now, as for the uh, channels, depth, and color, I usually leave all those the same. Uh, if you're looking to render out the alpha, uh, go ahead and choose this or just the alpha over here. And if you're looking to render out a photo, uh, a photo is different. You're going to have to go with a JPEG or a PNG sequence. In my case, I prefer PNG sequence. Um, once, you're, once you have chosen that, you can go into your format options and change the compression to whatever you want, although I do like to keep it at none. And you can change your depth from millions of colors to trillions of colors. That's usually as far as I would go. Now let's switch this back to the video settings. All right. And we can uh, actually adjust the audio output over here. From here, we can change basically anything uh, related to the audio. I'll usually leave this the way it is. You can also compress it in any way you want. And another interesting thing is resizing. I use this all the time. Uh, right now, I have my composition set to 1080p quality. However, you could change this to 720 by just simply changing it right there. Now, the reason you should choose this over going through composition and changing the size of all those, you know, uh, pieces is because this is a high quality uh, resize. And because of that, you don't have to worry about going through all the individual files and resizing them. And this is very, very helpful. So definitely stick to this when you have to resize. Uh, that's really about it for the output module. And last but not least, we have the output to setting, which is basically where we find where we want to output our render to. Now, please keep in mind that if you're rendering a picture, like in my case, you always want to make sure your composition is set to only one frame, no more, uh, only because when you go to render it out, you're going to get you're going to get several frames of that single photo. And I doubt you're going to want that. Uh, when it comes to video, just keep it whatever it is that you want to keep it. And just make sure that all your frame rates match. Uh, all the frame rates and all your pieces of video match. So if, if they don't, you may run into some problems. 
Uh, and now moving on to making everything faster. Now, first we want to go to edit, preferences, and go to memory and multiprocessing. Now, once in here, you'll see several different options. First of all, it shows you the installed RAM on your computer. I only have eight gigabytes. Uh, over here, it shows the RAM reserved for other applications. And this is extremely important. Uh, in most cases, when you go to render a video, you're probably not going to be messing around with other uh, programs or applications on your computer. So in my case, I tend to leave this at 1.5 gigabytes. Uh, however, in many cases, you're going to have to keep an eye on this only because you may have more or less RAM. So you can always adjust this to, uh, accordingly. Um, and now we can move on to multiprocessing. Now by hitting this uh, checkbox over here, you can enable multiprocessing, which is basically uh, processing several frames at the same time. Now this is quite helpful when you're running a, uh, you know, an After Effects CS4 on a 32-bit system because you can really uh, optimize uh, any kind of 32-bit operating system to render everything much faster. So if you have a 32-bit op operating system, this is absolutely very, very helpful and should be utilized almost all the time. However, if you have a 64-bit, I'm not quite sure if it makes a difference, but either way, I keep this on. So we have our four CPUs over here. And if we move on, we have these CPUs reserved for other applications. Now, if you're running applications in the background, you can change this to one or even two. However, most of the time when I go to, when I go to render a video, I would usually leave this at zero, only because I really don't need any CPUs focusing on other programs. So I will leave that at zero. And the RAM allocation per background CPU should be left at one. However, if you have less, um, actually, if you have more or less, depending on uh, how much memory you have, you can change this to a greater or uh, less amount. That's really about it, guys. Um, you can also enable media and disk cache, which would optimize performance when you're actually making the video and rendering on the go. Uh, however, you are going to need several hard drives for this, actually a couple. Um, so we can mess around with these settings uh, accordingly. So I'm just going to hit cancel. And that's about it, guys.